they showed a lot of toughness and resilience when things we, we lost the lead and then they took the lead and then uh, I thought these two young ladies made some really really big plays in Nia Steele and then she then the two pull-ups late in the game by a mile um, and, and then the two free throws after it secured a, a rebound at that point in time, I think it was a rebound or a loose ball. I can't remember exactly what it was. Rebound or loose ball, and then two big free throws. You know, from from Nia. Now I, I think there were a lot of players who made a lot of great things happen for us, and but these two young ladies really showed a lot of toughness for two young young players to do that down the stretch. Is something hopefully they can build on their confidence moving forward because that takes a lot a lot of courage and a lot of toughness and a lot of guts to do that. Questions for the players first, please. Amaya, how do you, what's the art, I guess is the best word to use, of shaking off a difficult stretch, kind of resetting and coming back in and making plays like that? Because you had a pretty tough start to the fourth quarter. I think at some point, at one point, coach even took you out for a minute or two. Um, how do you shake that off and do what you did? Um, I would say, do I need you some? Oh, there you go. I would say just like, I was trying to find my center and then I remember Donnie P always preaches body language, so it's like you have to have good body language because then it will like, yeah, Donnie P, I remember that. Thank you. And it like it'll like click in your mental. Like if you feel if you like show you're confident, then you're gonna believe you're confident. Or, you know. I mean, but on a night when you your shots were kind of not falling, to take that shot, can you just kind of walk me through that possession? <laughs> For those two <laughs> possessions, I, I guess, you know? I really can't. I don't necessarily remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, Did you not expect that? <laughs> they, I think they went under the screen, and it was like, this is, like that's my shot, and I shot it. That's no hesitation? No hesitation? I don't think so. I just pulled it. <laughs> um, Nia, maybe the most important steal you've had so far in a go for a uniform and then to go down on a, in a season where you haven't hit a lot of free throws to hit both of them with 11 seconds left what does this do for your confidence i think it really helps me know my role on this team and just know that my coaches and my teammates all believe in me even like when i first found out that i was going to be shooting free throws i was like uh oh and then, like, everybody around me was like, no, like, these are in, these are in. And so having them around me to be confident in me really helped boost my confidence. What did you see on that steal? What did you walk me through that play? <laughs> they were, we have nobody on this team who can remember what they did? <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach B always talks about seeing the ball. She yells at me a lot, especially <laughs> for it, because <laughs> I can get glued to, like, a person. So just... I was just watching the ball, and she says, if you do that, the ball will fall in your hands, and it happened to him. Uh, you're to both of the players. Um, you guys played so long in the third quarter. That the first eight minutes of the fourth quarter, things got away from you. Like you, were, you, you were chasing down a lot of loose balls. What happened in that stretch that, that allowed them to get back into the game? Well, personally, I definitely committed a lot of turnovers and was just being over-aggressive, not making right reads. So. That's a lot of it, I would say. Like, I have to take accountability for that. So the decisions made with the ball on my part. <coughs> and also, just like calls that we were getting in the first half, we weren't getting in the fourth. And it was hard, but we focused on like our huddles and everything, getting tight, talking to each other, telling us to deep breathe, and stuff like that, and just taking one possession at a time. Uh, well, can you, I mean, Nia, in the second quarter, you guys were making shots. I think she had four or five offensive rebounds. I think you guys had 10 offensive rebounds in the, in the quarter to kind of keep you in when you weren't shooting. Do you think this is the best you've seen Nia play since she started playing? <laughs> I would, yes, and I remember the Rutgers game and the Michigan game, she did really good, especially the Rutgers game. She was getting tips and like steals all around. So it's up there, it's in the top three. Do you think it was your best game? Um. Hopefully my best game is my next game always. Hey! <laughs> but I think it was definitely a good game and it helped my team move forward and that's what matters. Uh, for you of the players, having come back from what could have been a pretty tough loss, what does it do for your confidence going forward? <laughs> I think it just gives us confidence that we can go out, we can do great things and not a lot of people 
believe in us, but we know we believe in us, so I think we're just going to keep running and keep getting better. How do you plan on manage um, when the game kind of like shifts in energy to like where it's super fast paced, but then like it's slow, but then it's really picked up again? How do you kind of manage that as a player? Does it ever come like as a surprise at all? I would say the game just has like ebbs and flows. Like there's going to be dead periods and then there's going to be super fast periods. But like as a team, always bringing energy and always just trying to play as hard as we can can help um, no matter where the game is at the moment. You go with players? Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys, you can come up. Great job. <laughs> Kent, you're going to ask some more questions. All right, questions well, for Coach? I'd like to know what you said to Maya when you took her out there. Because I saw you say something to her and she said back on the bench, what was the message? Well, and I don't remember exactly what it was at that time. I remember talking to her on the bench and we were getting ready to sub her back in. And my question to her was, are you ready to play with confidence? You, we need you to play with a great deal of confidence. You know, and, and I told her after the game, I was really, really proud of her because it is challenging to have a stretch where you don't play well and then you have to step up and make big shots or you have the ability to step up and make big shots to even want to take that shot. And so I, I was very, very impressed with her wanting to be aggressive, not necessarily aggressive and over penetrating. I think what I probably told her at the time is right now you're just over penetrating. Right now, attack, retreat, reattack, or just attack and get it, get an enter, get it moving. And so then we we did try a couple different players trying to just bring the ball in to get it entered a little bit quicker. But um, I, I gave her give her a lot of credit for coming back and being aggressive down the stretch to hunt shots because those were two really big shots that she hit. Coach, you faced NDSU a lot over the years, and especially USD. How is this team different from those teams? Well, so I, I told Heaven Hamley when we played against her in November, I was glad to never have to play against her again. But I, what I should have learned in the world of coaching is never say never. Because when she was warming up and we kind of exchanged a little glance before the game, I looked at her and I was like, I thought we were done with you. And she was like, not yet, one more. You know, but so I, I think this team, this team has really good size, really good length. They've got they've got a really good blend of some very veteran players, you know, in Heaven Hamling and Schulte in particular, you know, and then Elle Evans, even though she's young, is someone who has played a lot and who is is who gives them an awful lot. Jory, you know, does such a good job of of make everything that you try to do defensively. He's got counters for and reads for, and his players are really smart and make good decisions with it. But they've got a good blend of some very experienced players and some young, really talented ladies. And so I, I'm i not surprised that they're the, you know, knocking on the door. I thought they, in the Summit League Championship game, they were right there. You know, they were right there, and all of a sudden a quick swing goes against them, you know, and, and that's the difference. But the, I think they're, they're a very well-coached team, a very disciplined team, played really good basketball. and. You know, we're, we're excited, we're thankful that we have a chance to keep playing. Um, Nia, five offensive rebounds tonight, two steals, mm -hmm. one huge steal. Um, when I thought her first the one before that, that she, she could have scored a layup on, but trying to get Nia to be aggressive to score the ball. And that's what, every, and I know exactly what the exchange was, because she found out she was shooting free throws and her expression was, oh. <laughs> like, you got these, You're, you got these, this is your time. And then all the other players said whatever they said to her at that point in time. And for her to get those two big steals and then to hit two big free throws should provide her a lot of confidence. You know, I think in the game against Pacific, she was getting the ball. She was getting more post touches than she has in other games and was at times it was a sec. It's like the second thought for her to be aggressive to score it. You know, she wants to get it to get it to somebody else. But that's a we need her to be a threat. And I thought she was trying to do more of that. So hopefully this helps her be more confident with them. And as a coach, when you go back and review this game and get ready for the next one, um, are you going to focus on what went wrong or what went right? Well, we'll focus on, on what went right. I think ultimately style of play was is going to be different with Wyoming too. And so we've got to look at what that looks like. And right now, we we kind of flip it, and we may show a couple possessions from this game, but we really flip it, and we really focus on what we have to do to get ready for the next one. Do you think this team rallies back early earlier this year when they're in these kind of circumstances? Well, we've we've done this a few different times at home. I think in the the Drake game, in the Purdue game, we've had had some kind of comeback success. 
Um, and, and again, tonight, so being at home certainly helps with that. I think, you know, we there are players who, a lot of players who made big plays. Grace Krahowski hit some big shots. I think she started the game one for three from the arc and then finished four for eight. So what a, what a great way, great stretch. And she made some really big ones for us. Um, you know, nice to to be in a in a spot where we we challenged our players after the first time out. I think it was time out that Jory called. They're about four minutes gone in the game at that point in time. And at that point in time, they already had three or four offensive rebounds. I think they had four offensive rebounds at that time, and or three, and ended up with eight. At that point in time, we didn't have one offensive rebound, and we weren't really sifting shots, making shots. And then we ended up with 21 offensive rebounds. So from an effort standpoint, I thought our effort was absolutely outstanding in, in a lot of the ways. You know, we still need to get, it, and we have a sh not many games left, but we got to find ways to keep getting better defensively. That's going to be really important for us. But this was, this was really big for our young ladies, and this is why you we're, we're excited and we're thankful to keep playing because these are things that we're, we're going to learn from and keep getting better. Don, you won a game tonight where Laura didn't carry you and didn't have to carry you. How do you think that that helps this group go? Well, it's important for us that she does change the game in the way that she draws a lot of attention still, and, and she's a really solid defender for us, you know. But certainly, we've got to we've got to continue to find more offense, offensive firepower in different ways. And and today, tonight, it was they're getting getting more possessions. You know, we we were able to do that at a pretty high level. So. You know, free throws were even on the entire game, so then it comes down to we got some more shots, and that's going to be really important for us. So if you're not going to make shots, go get offensive rebounds, and, and we were fortunate to do that. I mean, Mallory Hire grabbing 12 rebounds in a game is unbelievable. And, and her, uh, her back cuts early in the game, her finishing around the rim was probably the best it's been all year. Um, four big offensive rebounds for us. Nina's five offensive rebounds. And then I thought one of the one, a big play was when Grace shot it, Missed it. We got an offensive rebound. We missed that shot, and then she got the offensive rebound and put it back in. So, uh, showed a lot of kind of resilience and a lot of players stepping up in different ways. Yeah, you did a much better job on the offense than more in the last three quarters in the first quarter. Did you say anything to the quarterback about being more aggressive? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we absolutely addressed that. But in the last time that we played against North Coast State, when we played them in November. I mean, North Coast State's a, a team that wins that the rebound battles a lot of times. I think when we played them in November, they were averaging 16 offensive rebounds a game. Now they're at the stage where they're averaging 13 offensive rebounds a game. Now we didn't do a good enough job defensively to make them miss enough shots, so that probably skewed a little bit. But the last time that we played against them in November, we only had five offensive rebounds. And, and so it was certainly a point of emphasis for us, but at, some, at the same time, it's not something that we have a lot of time to go practice because we played, we had a day that we kind of walked through some things and just really didn't wear our bodies down. We did one day prep basically then and then turn around and play. So it was more of you've got to have some fight and determination, and we, we certainly show them. What did you like from Sophie Hart? It seemed like pretty consistently she was a very like, consistent under the hoop, but then kind of went into some foul trouble down the line. What did you see and what did you like? Well, what I liked out of Sophie is – you know, we were able to get some touches, kind of deep touches and, and score opportunities early. Um, they were they were really moving her kind of out of there and fronting her and kind of moving her a little bit out of there later in the game so we didn't get some of those same opportunities. But then we had other players. I think we got Grace out on the block one time. We got Mar on the block, or um, Mal on the block one time. But then I, what I was really proud of her for is that the NDSU's ball screen, it's hard to guard them in their ball screen reads. It's really hard. And... And the way, in order for us to, to to guard it the way we wanted to guard it at the beginning of the game and have our guards get through it is really tough because if your guards can't get through that screen very easily and you go underneath it, then Heaven Hamling and L Evans hit shots and they and, and Heaven hit one of those. And then, so we went to switching them. Well, switching them puts a strain on, on your defense in a couple different ways. One, you're primary post kid has to guard Heaven Hamling in space. That's tough to do. She's tough to guard. And and Sophie had to do that, and, and I thought did a pretty good job of that, very honestly. That's not easy, and that's not something that we've done a lot of this year. But it's something that we knew was probably the, the best option for us. 
And so I was proud of her because I think that's very uncomfortable and I thought she did a really good job with that. It's also uncomfortable for your guards because your guards have to guard their post kids inside. And then on the back side, if you don't help well enough and we're trying to deny post touches, they throw it inside. And then if you do help, then they set their stagger screen action and hit threes and they got us on a couple of those different things. So the good news was, I think overall for our players, is that again, they're learning how to continue to make adjustments. And, and I thought we, there were a couple different ways that we did that during this game. Time for one or two more. Do you know anything about Wyoming? They played a pretty tough schedule. I think two of their losses came to UNLV, which I think was in the tournament. Yeah, I, I don't know a whole lot about them at this point in time yet. No, not really. I know our, our coaches have spent time scouting and, and getting us ready for that, but um, we'll look at that in a few minutes, I guess, start working on that. And finally, 28 minutes for Mara. Yeah. She felt good, and obviously she came off that last game feeling good. Yeah, yeah, she did. She did, so we'll see uh, moving forward kind of where it's at. All right. Thanks, guys. So thank you.